Now, respiratory failure, in other terminology, people define it a different way. In my opinion, when the pulmonary system is no longer able to meet the metabolic demands of the body, then the patient goes into respiratory failure. What is supplied by the respiratory system? It is supplied, oxygen is supplied by respiratory system, and circulatory system supplies the nutrition, and that is the metabolic demand of the cell. In the cell, it is the demand of the mitochondria. Now, there are, as I told in the previous lecture also, there are six laws of physics, gas laws of physics, which apply to respiratory system. Graham's law of diffusion, this is a diffusion in the gas media. Henry's law of diffusion, it's a diffusion of gas in the liquid media. Dalton's law of partial pressure, as you already know it, Higgins Poisetti law is related to laminar flow of gases in a tube. Ohm's law is a it uh, combines uh, resistance to and pressure and flow. Then Laplace law. This Laplace law is applied all over in the body. It is applied in the alveoli. It is applied in the uh, ventricles. It is applied in the uh, uh, urinary bladder. It is applied in the gut. It is applied in the vessel also. But there is a different explanation for it. But as far as we are concerned with the respiratory system, it applies on the alveoli. Now, the function of respiratory system is to get the oxygen in. What will it do? When the gas goes into the alveoli, it should exert its pressure. When we started breathing, under the fractional inspired concentration, there is a partial pressure in that atmospheric of oxygen. That's about 148 to 149 or 150 millimeter of mercury. And when it reaches to alveoli, then it is reduced to 108 or 110. That's called partial pressure of oxygen in the alveoli. And the partial pressure of, in the alveoli is a combination of partial pressure of different gases, like of oxygen, of carbon dioxide, of water, and of nitrogen. So it is a new thing which comes into the alveoli from the blood is the carbon dioxide. So it dilutes the partial pressure which has been taken in the inspired gas. So, the, so we'll concentrate on partial pressure of oxygen in the alveoli. This is alveolar pressure. This is affected by partial pressure of carbon dioxide in the alveoli, which depends on the respiratory rate, which depends on the tidal volume, which depends on the volume pressure response. That means compliance. Then it depends on the FiO2, how much oxygen you are taking in. And it also depends on the pattern of ventilation or respiration. What is the inspiratory phase? What is the inspiratory to expiratory phase period? And what is the expiration period phase? So we can increase and decrease also when we are ventilating the patient. And there is oxygen problem, we increase the inspiratory phase. When there is carbon dioxide problem, we increase the expiratory phase, depending on the condition of the patient. Now, getting out of carbon dioxide depends on the respiratory rate. Faster the rate, the more it will be taken out. And greater the tidal volume, the more will be coming out. Then, how much is the perfusion in the lung? Ventilation perfusion ratio. Normally, uh, alveolar ventilation divided by the blood which is coming into the into the lung. So that is ventilation perfusion ratio. Roughly, four liters of gases come into the lung into the actually respiratory unit of the lung or alveolar ventilation, and about five liters of blood comes per minute into the lung. Four liter divided by five liter is a 0.8. This is ventilation perfusion ratio. When this ratio is maintained, then it is proper uh, maintenance of oxygenation and carbon dioxide is taken out. Wherever this is disturbed, if you have more ventilation than perfusion, this is that space effect. When you got more perfusion, less ventilation, this is a shunt effect. Now, as the uh, pulmonologist uh, divided into a hypoxemic failure and hypercapnic failure. Hypoxemic failure is, could be due to decreased FIO2. You are giving less oxygen. Could be in some part of the lung, there is ventilation, but there is no perfusion. It means that's specific. 
or in some part of the lobby, there is perfusion, but there is no ventilation. It means there is shunting effect, or then diffusing, diffusion from alveoli up to the blood and up to the hemoglobin, that pathway is affected. So all these cause hypoxemic failure. And hypercapnic failure is if the patient is hypoventilating, respiratory rate is very low, or there is a shunting effect. There is more blood coming than the ventilation. So the blood is passing in the thorax, in the lung, without coming in contact with the gases. So it is not taking up oxygen. It is not washing out the carbon dioxide. So this is the most important cause of QS over QT. It is the most common cause of uh, hypercapnia. Clinically, a patient with a respiratory failure uh, have clinical effects, signs of respiratory compensation. Patient will be tachypneic. Tachypnea is increase in respiratory rate. It has got no relation with the volume. Hyperopnea is there increase in tidal volume. Then and on, on the whole, when we say ventilation, we always think about the tachypnea and hyperopnea. Then excessive muscle use. Whenever you are examining the respiratory system, always sit, stand on the foot end of the patient and raise the head of the patient 10 to 20 uh, uh, degree. And then you watch the patient and chest will be exposed and you watch the patient. And you can see whether, what is the respiratory rate and whether the patient is stressed or not, whether the patient is using accessory muscles or not. And even if obviously you don't see any respiratory distress, but look at the nose. Alien is there we moving. There's the early sign that the patient is using accessory muscle. That's a very important point. Then because of hypoxia or hypercarbia, particularly with hypercarbia, there is stimulation of sympathetic system. That will be causing tachycardia. And that will cause hypertension because the blood pressure is nothing but stroke volume into heart rate into peripheral resistance. So, so that tachycardia will cause hypertension. And due to stimulation of postganglionic sympathetic cholinergic fibers, it will cause sweating. Right. So autonomic nervous, knowing of autonomic nervous system is very important. I usually ask the people, why, what are the fibers which are stimulated to cause the sweating? So it means you should know what are the adrenergic fiber, what are the cholinergic fiber, and where they are present. And there are cholinergic fiber in sympathetic system also. Postganglionic sympathetic cholinergic fibers when you stimulate. So it causes sweating. Exocrine sweat glands is the blood carpet. And skeletal blood vessels. Skeletal vessel, blood vessels will be dilated. And the organ of hypoxia, altered mental state. In the brain, if there is hypoxia, it will alter the mental state. And eventually, if the hypoxia is worsening, it will cause bradycardia and it will lead to lowering of blood pressure. Hemoglobin desaturation, that will be indicated by cyanosis. But cyanosis is not only indication for hypoxia. But the patient has got low hemoglobin, they will not be cyanosed early because you need to have five grams of hemoglobin, which should be unoxygenated. If you've got higher level of hemoglobin, they will become cyanose very quickly as compared to the people who were anemic. Now, by definition, ARDS is combination of refractory hypoxemia plus non-cardiogenic pulmonary. This is the Lubel Lubaba of Jesuqafin, ARDS. This is refractory hypoxemia, refractory to the normal way of giving oxygen to the patient. And there is a pulmonary edema, but it's not because of heart. It's a non-cardiogenic pulmonary edema. Now, mechanism of this thing is direct insult of the lung, or there is an effect of systemic inflammatory response of the body on the lung. This is SIR on the lung. Now, first phase is acute lung injury, ALI. Then second phase, it leads to ARDS. And how we clinically differentiate, what, these are the typical uh, causative factors of ARDS. Aspiration. This most of the time happens in intensive care unit or we are feeding the patient in the hospital in ordinary ward. And this is negligence on the part of the people who are attending the patient or 
it could be the your nasogastric tube is not in the proper place. Near drowning, smoke or toxic chemical inhalation, pulmonary contusion, pneumonia. Then indirectly for long severe shock, sepsis, pericreatitis. You get a lot of patients of pericreatitis going into ARDS. Then massive transfusion, fat embolism, and this is the most important cause in your hospital, cardiopulmonary bypass. They tend to go into air. Now, how we differentiate between ALA and ARDS? Practical diagnostic criteria for acute lung injury. Timing, if ALA is acute onset, and then you look at oxygenation. You take the ratio of partial pressure of oxygen in the arterial blood by FiO2. What percentage of oxygen you are giving? FiO2 is not 20%, 30%, 40%. As you got air, 21%. We write it down 0.21. You divide the PAO2 by 0.21. That will be a ratio more than, it should be more than 300 in a normal person. It goes up to 500. And in this case, it should be less than 300, but greater than 200, then it means the patient is in ARI, acute lung injury, regardless of the PACO2 or PEEP. Then chest X-ray, you look at the bilateral diffuse infiltrate. So the unilateral of the ARDS. ALI may have been bilateral. No apparent cardiogenic cause. Pulmonary capillary UHG pressure should be less than 18 millimeter of mercury. Risk factors, no triggering events on the risk factors. You know already what is happening with the patient. Now, on top of these things, when the oxygenation, PO2 or FIE2 ratio, goes below than 200, then you should know that the patient has gone into ARDS. I mean, any patient who is on ventilator or whom you are suspecting, you should always calculate this ratio. I'll always see. And this is a classification done entirely on the PAO2 divided by FIO2. So there are two stages, early stage and later stage of ARDS. In early stage, there is alveolar edema. When there is alveolar edema, it is occupying the alveoli. It means it is reducing the ventilatory area. area diffusion That will reduce the aerated lung volume. So then the surfact activity is reduced. Surfact product, production and release is normal at this stage but it becomes ineffective because of presence of pulmonary edema into the alveoli. So surfactant, what do the surfactant do? It increases the compliance. Compliance, the compliance will be reduced also. Gas exchange abnormality precede the lung mechanics abnormality. At this stage, they, there is a, uh, no mechanical abnormality. Mechanics of lung means compliance and resistance. They are not affected primarily. Primarily, gas exchange is affected. Gas exchange from alveoli to the blood. It means alveolar capillary pathway is affected because there is a pulmonary edema. Lung starts collapsing and consolidation starts. Time constant is increased. Time constant now starts increasing. Time constant is nothing but is a product of compliance and resistance. Compliance and resistance, time constant. My professor used to say, Mamtaz, when you're talking about lung, always remember time constant. Now, what is time constant? Compliance with uh, multiply by the resistance. What is the compliance? So volume change, but unit change in pressure. Then you go to resistance. What is the resistance? It is in conducting pathway or excavatory pathway. Then accordingly, you go on like this. Then increase inflation of non-dependent lung. Because as you know, according to the John West classification, upper part of the lung has more ventilation than provision. Middle has got equal ventilation provision. Then lower has got more provision than yeah. ventilation. Now, when the lower part is lung is affected by early uh, ARDS, then most of the gas will go into the upper part. Upper part, the dead space effect will be increased. There's more ventilation than provision. So that's what we are saying. There is the increased inflation of non-dependent lung. That will worsen the oxygenation. At a later stage, now the surfactant synthesis is affected. There is a reduction in 
release and synthesis is of surfactant, that will reduce the compliance. Compliance is nothing but volume change per unit and change pressure. Then the increased collagen formation and that will increase the fibroblastic activity. So now air resistance increase. Now the compliance and resistance both are affected in the later stage. Now the patient is going into full ARDS. Why the air resistance increase? Because there is epithelial edema of conducting pathway and then there is bronchospath. That will increase the uh, resistance. Then there will be arterial hypoxia because the shunting of the blood starts and ventilation provision ratio is reduced in the dependent part of the lung. So that will cause shunting. Now, VD over VT is increased also. That will cause hypercarbia. So now hypercarbia starts appearing rapidly at this stage. Now, some people divide into different stages of acute respiratory failure. Normal, normally, we look at the room PO2. It is about 80 to 100. Uh, air PCO2 is 35 to 45. And breathing an air, AA gradient. A gradient is nothing but partial pressure of oxygen in the alveoli minus partial pressure of oxygen in the arterial blood. That's about 5 to 10. Shunt is normally 5 to 8. What are the causes of normal physiological shunt? You already know it. Then first, injury state and resuscitation. Abhita Kaapke Khabu Khyal Bimirika patient ERDS me jara hai. Clinical evidence is none. Chest X-ray is normal, but the room PO2 starts going down, 70 to 90. Air PCO2 starts decreasing, 30 to 40. And on air, then breathing and uh, air gradient, it starts increasing. And shunt, that increases 10 to 20. It means any patient which comes with a uh, with this sort of infection, you should start calculating this thing. Start monitoring the PO2, start monitoring the PCO2, start monitoring the A gradient, start monitoring the QS over QT. That will give you the indication of the patient is going ahead towards the ARDS. Then second, subclinical respiratory distress. There is a mild to moderate tachypnea. Now the tachypnea starts. Start increasing the respiratory rate minimal or no infiltration at that time when you look at the x-ray. Now the room PO2, at room air PO2 has starts going down again, goes to 60 to 80, and PCO2 25 to 35, and A gradient 30 to 50, and then shunt is 12 to 25. It's a subclinical picture. And we always ignore up to this level. So, this monitor PO2, PCO2, A gradient, and shunt. If you do it, you will see the stages in front of you. Then, third is the established respiratory distress. There is increasing tachypnea. There is the obvious edema and infiltration in the lung. And there is a, on room air, the PO2 value 50 to 60. PCO2 is 20 to 35, then A gradient is 40 to 60, and then shunt equation, shunt has increased to 20 to 40. The fourth severe respiratory distress, which we divide in three stages, but it will be obvious respiratory failure, increasing the opacity equation of the lung, and there will be about PO2 is 40 to 60, PCO2 is 25 to 40. Now PCO2 built up when it starts. A gradient starts increasing and QS over Q2 is further increased. Now, cardinal clinical presentation is severe respiratory distress, then severe hypoxemia due to alveolar edema, regional ventilation perfusion defect, and there is increase in factors which are reducing the PVO2. PVO2 is very important. Partial pressure of oxygen in the venous blood, PVO2. Then decrease in oxygen consumption. The lung is, uh, blood is just passing arterial to venous side without giving oxygen. There is shunting effect starts at the tissue level. And then the cardiac output is decreased. So it depends. That oxygen depends now entirely on the hemoglobin level. 
there will be bilateral diffuse infiltration and x-ray wahan fir hum kehte hain ha ye waqai ARDs mein chala gaya pehle aapne dekha hi nahi ab jis stage pe jab pahunchta hai aapko bade bade nazar aate hain opacification hui aap kehte hain ab ye ARDs mein chala halanki is stage pe aake control karna bada mushkil hota hai agar hum shuru se hi step lena shuru kar dete to behtar ho jata patient then there will be marked pulmonary edema and there might be pulmonary barrow trauma also important parameters to look from the very beginning is the blood gas always take the arterial sample and venous sample because under unless you look at both samples you cannot assess how much oxygen has been taken by the tissue that is called vo2 right what is important act because of oxygen vo2 delivery might be normal and uh, we don't know oxygen has been extracted by the tissue we don't know how much is extracted the extracted ratio should be about 24 to 25% of the delivery if that is extracted then we don't know whether the tissue is using it or not that will lactate will tell you tell us that oxygen is there has been taken has been utilized so that will give you that will be the lactate is the monitoring or utilization of oxygen at the mitochondria then you look at the a gradient it's very important and then ratio pao2 over pao2 because here you see partial pressure of oxygen in the alveoli minus partial pressure of oxygen in the arterial blood isi ko dekhte hain aap dekhte hain lekin isme pressure ka effect hai pressure ke effect neutral ka nahi dono p ko uda de p small a o2 over p big a o2 isko ratio ko nikale that's round about 67% 0.67 or then you are giving air and goes up to 100% when you are giving 100% oxygen to these patients ye aapke blood abg wale jo machine hogi wo deti hogi aapko nahi to aap khud bhi nikal sakte hain deti hogi isko ye bada important hai so dekhte pata lagta hai ki diffusion kaise ho rahi hai lang then you look at the shunt fraction also management very simple control the parent problem remove the cause वैसे ये कहते हैं ना मेडिसिन में और हम हाउस जॉब कर रहे थे एक पेशेंट की प्रॉक्टिस को भी करने लगे हमारे रजिस्ट्रार साहब उसको उस पे ट्रॉली पे ये भी प्रॉक्टिस डाला यू वेंट इन टू ब्रेडी कार्ड और बाह के सिलेंडर ले गए ऑक्सीजन का उसके नाक में लगा दिया से लगा देते लेग भी रेज कर दी कुछ नहीं इतने दिन में सी नहीं रजिस्ट्रार आया उसने कहा व्हाट्सएप ने नहीं कहा मैं प्रॉक्टिस को भी करने लगा था तो उसको ब्रेडी कार्ड ही में चला गया उसने देखा पेशेंट के तो पेशेंट स्टिल टेक्निक एंड साइनोस उसने आगे प्रोडक्ट्स को निकाल दिया कहते रिमूव द काल्स जब वो काल्स निकाल ली पेशेंट उठ के बैठ गया तो इसलिए पहली इंपॉर्टेंट चीज हमेशा हम कहते हैं रिमूव द काल्स कंट्रोल ऑफ पेरेंट प्रॉब्लम देन अनदर थिंग व्हिच वी डू इन दिस पेशेंट इज प्रोग्रेसिव डिहाइड्रेशन व्हाट इज प्रोग्रेसिव डिहाइड्रेशन आई विल टेल यू देयर आर ओनली टू इंडिकेशन ऑफ प्रोग्रेसिव डिहाइड्रेशन वन इज एआरडीएस और रेस्पिरेटरी फेलियर पेशेंट and other is pre eclampsia and eclampsia we do progressive dehydration right then optimal distension of alveoli optimize the functional residual capacity keep the alveoli distended that's very important if you if you let the alveoli collapse then it makes it worse then reduce the progressive atelectasis that's the one way of increasing the frc and other way is to uh, optimize the patient with the tidal volume then nursing care what the nurses do in addition to look out they should encourage the coughing deep breathing and nebulization in aise main heading hi bata raha hu aapki har topic itself ek pura topic banta hai position changing then head up side and prone position then head elevation should always be kept at side elevation it doesn't mean the patient is supine or our patient is prone in whatever position head should always be raised so then chest physiotherapy we start from the very beginning chest physiotherapy just not very aggressive in the beginning but it should be chest physiotherapy now general care infection control up to infection control ki team mein ho gayi har jagah so it's very important non antibiotic way of इन्फेक्शन कंट्रोल वो भी आपको सारा आना चाहिए मैं एक लेक्चर देता हूँ नॉन एंटीबायोटिक वे ऑफ 
controlling the infection in ICU. Then pain, fever, restlessness should be controlled because they all increase the oxygen requirement at a cell level. They should be pain-free and reduce the temperature as soon as possible. And restless is also, they should be given sedation and keep the cell at rest. Then abdominal distension should be reduced. You should have nasogastric tube in and, and should see the gut is moving, all right now, and you raise the head, that will take away the pressure of the abdominal contents on the diaphragm because that will enhance that electricity if you don't do that. Then thoracentesis, if there is a fluid early, why not to tap it and drain it out? Now, fluid therapy, I said, we do the progressive dehydration. Progressive dehydration means while keeping the hemodynamics normal, you take the person into negative. It means you remove the fluid which, is, which has been collected outside the vessel. Usko vessel mein lai, vessel se la ke ke nige ziriye bahan nikale. Because hemodynamics to normal rakhna bada zaroori hai. Because it is the blood flow and the total blood volume which will take the oxygen and nutrition to the cell. Agar isi ko kam kar diya, it toh aur cell mein problem honi shur ho jati. While keeping the hemodynamics normal to take the person into negative around about 1 to 1.5 liter every day. This is what's what we do in the pre-eclampsia and eclampsia. Agar is tarah karenge toh paani andar se bahar ajay. Uske liye progressive dehydration ke jam dekhe ke how can we do it? Objective is to take the osmolality up to 320 milli osmos per liter. The dominantly osmolality is dependent on kis me depend kar di? Sodium ke. Aap uh, calculate kar sakte hain osmolality. As, uh, calculate kar sakte hain. Look, look at the sodium level. Double it. Look at the potassium level. Double it. Look at the magnesium level. Double it. The positive one. Aap, uh, sugar ka level you have, usko pe divide kar de, that will be millimoles. Oh, singly add karenge, is tara, little bit contribution. So, predominantly, if you look at the fluid which you are giving to the patient, on the day, normally saline, saline me kitna hoti hai, sodium, 154, 154 plus 154, uska male ke saath female itni hai, so 308 to the sodium ki hai. Sodium is already Slightly hyperosmolar. Easily, to hum brain insult wale patient ko mesha sodium dete. Kyunke iski osmolality thodi jaayi ho cell se pani nikalta hai. Agar unko hum ring a lactate de de, ya heart vein de de, usko hota 134 sodium. Wo 268 manta hai. It is slightly hyperosmolar. So agar brain wale de de, pani brain mein jana shuru ho jata hai. Edema ho jata hai. Always give saline solution until unless your sodium is already high. Sodium flow. So, one thing is that you have to sodium fluid and you have to monitor it. You have to take it to 320 mm. And you have to keep it in the hemodynamics. How do you keep it in fluid therapy? You know there are three compartments. Intravascular, interstitial and intracellular. In the case of two partitions. Between vessel and intercellular, there is a, there is a uh, capillary. Capillary is a freely private environment to water. Can go both sides, but there are factors which control it. It's called Starling's force. Colored osmotic pressure is exerted by the proteins, not by all the proteins. Smallest molecule of protein which cannot cross a capillary endothelial pore will have maximum colored activity. And hydrostatic pressure. Optimally, we reduce the hydrostatic pressure. Optimally. Don't reduce that much that you should decrease the perfusion. So, usko blood pressure pe depend karte hain isi ko hum control karke vessel se movement ko rokte hain aage cell level pe jo aapki partition hai so it's this cell membrane is freely permeable to water but there are osmotically active ions on the both sides of the uh, cell wall which control it it is the osmolality or osmolarity osmolarity and osmolarity dependent on these sodium potassium calcium magnesium is pe depend karti hai उसको उससे कंट्रोल करते हैं तो इसलिए आप बड़े इजी तरीके से ऐसा फ्लूइड देंगे जो वेसल में रहे टू टू डू द प्रोग्रेसिव डिहाइड्रेशन कौन सी है कोलड सॉल्यूशन अगर हीमोग्लोबिन का पर ब्लड इज वेस्ट फॉर्म देन प्लाज्मा प्लाज्मा सब्स्टिट्यूट सिंथेटिक जो है हम एक्सेल देंगे 
उसे आप रोजाना वो भी दें ताकि जो वैसल जो फ्लूड जल्दी बाहर ना जाए उसको कंट्रोल करें लेकिन बाहर वाले को अंदर लाएं हो सकता है उसको साथ मैनीटॉल देना पड़ेगा आपको इट विल एक्सट्रैक्ट द वाटर फ्रॉम इन टू सेवाटरमेंट इन टू वैसल एंड गो ऑन मॉनिटरिंग शुड है और सेंट्रल बिजनेस प्रेशर को रिलेटिव फिगर आई एक दफा मैयर का उससे बढ़ रही है या कम हो रही है उसी लिहाज से कंट्रोल बड़ा सिंपल है है ना आसान है तरीका जी ड्रग्स में मोस्टली ड्रग्स विच वी यूज द ब्रोंको डायलेटर्स सिम्टोमेटिक के लिहाज से या सिक्लिनिक और फाइनिक के लिहाज आइनोट्रोप्स की जरूरत पड़ती है आइनोट्रोप्स के साथ मुझे इसको इसको आइनोट्रोप्स मीन व्हिच इंक्रीज द एनोट्रोपिक एक्टिविटी ऑफ द माइकॉर्डिंग बट वी यूज द प्रेशर ड्रग्स आल्सो इज द प्रेशर ऑफ उसकी अलग अलग कैटेगरी इसके अलग अलग कैटेगरी आप तो कार्डियल लेवल तो बेहतर जानते हैं हमसे स्टीरॉइड्स लो डोज ऑफ लो डोज रेजिंग प्रीवियसली इट यूज्ड टू बी वेरी हाई रेजिंग बट दे फाउंड आउट दैट स्टीरॉइड्स लेवल ब्लड लेवल इज मेंटेनड बाय एड्रिनल ग्लैंड उधर मेडुल्ला से निकलते हैं स्टीरॉइड्स अब कैसे होती है वी हैव गॉट एड्रिनल ग्लैंड बाहर क्या है कॉर्टिक्स अंदर है मेडुल्ला पल्ला में इन्हें मेडुल्ला बाहर क्यों नहीं रख रहे हो कॉर्टिक्स अंदर क्यों नहीं रख रहे बिकॉज फॉर द सिंथेसिस एंड रिलीज ऑफ adrenaline or the catecholamine you require the steroid passing through it steroid uske pass honge they to enhance the synthesis and release of catecholamines right so it's very important steroid ka pehle role ek ye hai dusra role jaake vessel pe hota hai teesra hota hai antioxidant effect right or membrane stabilizing effect so steroid ko low dose mein 100 mg atonic le hasa de aap Although there are 19 surges of uh, production and release of steroids in 24 hours, so the best way of steroids, in my opinion, is to give in continuous increase. So we can take it 300 milligram, not even per hour. Because last one of this range for me, that is the best way because we have to maintain the level of steroids. If it comes down, 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 if it ये रूटीन वाली चीजें नाउ रेस्पिरेटरी केयर में जो एयरवे मेंटेनेंस एंड वेंटिलेटरी असिस्ट शुरू में एयरवे मेंटेनेंस करते हैं इफ देयर इज इंडिकेशन फॉर वेंटिलेटरी असिस्टेंट देन वी स्टार्ट वेंटिलेटरी असिस्ट नाउ मैकेनिकल वेंटिलेटरी सपोर्ट इट विल अलाउ योर टाइम फॉर लंग्स टू हील ठीक है आप पेशेंट को क्वाइट कर रहे हैं उसको असिस्टेंट दें तो लंग हील होगा लंग को आप आप खुद काम ना करने दें इट ट्रीट्स हेपोक्सिया मेंटली असिस्टेंट का एक मकसद यह इट इफेक्ट्स वर्सन द लंग इंजरी ये भी नहीं समझिए वेंटिलेशन के अपने नुकसान भी हैं इट विल वर्सन द लंग इंजरी डिपेंड्स हाउ मच राइड वॉल्यूम एंड हाउ मच इज द रेस्पिरी रेट एंड हाउ मच इज द पार्शल हाउ मच इज द प्रेशर यू लिविंग एट द एंड ऑफ एक्सप्रेशन दैन इट आल्टर द डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन ऑफ when you put the patient on a ventilator the certain volume of the gas goes into the lung volume of lung which goes into the uh, into the lung will be dependent on the compliance of the lung unit and resistance where the compliance is less it will go less and then that part which is normal there will be going more than normal so that will definitely affect the ventilation perfusion ventilation uh, distribution vd over vt ratio so it contributes to organ dysfunction also how it affects because it's a separate topic what are the adverse effect of artificial ventilation it is always because of putting the postural pressure into the thorax creating the pressure gradient between the abdominal cavity and the thoracic and between the thorax and the cervical activity ke darmiyan jo pressure gradient develop kar dete hain because of positive pressure ventilation that gives you side effects and the complication of ventilation theek hai agar pressure andar zyada hai bar ki nisbat it will reduce the venous return it will increase the icp you should be very careful when you are putting the patient ventilator with a head insult or anything with the brain uske liye aap peep to kabhi bhi nahi dete lekin deni bhi pad jaye to head ko aur uncha kar dete niche se it will reduce the venous return and it reduces the venous return it decreases the pressure gradient in the liver in the gut in the kidney if you decrease the pressure gradient it decreases the perfusion of the organ when you decrease the perfusion of the organ it affects the function of the organ 
EGFR कम हो जाता है आपका ऐसे बढ़ते जाए करते जाए इसलिए इसी प्रेशर ग्रेडिंग की वजह से ही बहुत इफेक्ट लगे बैड इफेक्ट ऑफ वेंटिलेशन इन एडिशन टू डायरेक्ट इफेक्ट ऑफ द लंग देर ऑलवेज रिमेंबर थ्री वॉल्यूट्रामा पैरोट्रामा एंड बायोट्रामा तीन ट्रामा होते हैं लंग को डायरेक्टली पुट द पेशेंट ऑन ए पॉजिटिव प्रेशर वेंटिलेशन मेन गोल इज मेंटेन गैस एक्सचेंज मेंटेन द टिश्यू ऑक्सीजनेशन अवॉइड द एडवर्स इफेक्ट now oxygen delivery to tissue what is the role of respiratory system what is the role of circulatory system and what is the metabolic state of tissue in these cheezon pe depend karta hai adequacy of respiratory system is respiratory system function is to deliver the oxygen to circulation usne sirf circulation tak pahunchane ki that depends on fio2 that depends on conducting pathway that depends on the mean airway pressure that depends on inspiratory time that depends on the alveolar capillary pathway is char panch cheezon pe depend karti hai oxygen delivery to circulation by respiratory system theek inhi ke sath you feel other one ye kitne percent oxygen de rahe hain aur conducting pathway ki condition kaisi hai mean airway pressure kitna hai inspiratory time kitna hai alveolar capillary path ke darmiyan to ऑब्स्ट्रक्शन तो नहीं उसमें एल्यूडीमा हो सकता है इंटरसील एडीमा हो सकता है लेस प्रोविजन हो सकती है इस बात देन यू लुक एट एडिक्वेस सर्कुलेटरी सिस्टम व्हिच हैज टू डिलीवर द ऑक्सीजन व्हिच हैज कम इनटू इट टू द टिश्यूज सो दैट डिपेंड्स ऑन द कार्डियक आउटपुट पहली चीज दूसरा वीनस रिटर्न तीसरा हीमोग्लोबिन लेवल बिकॉज़ इट इज अ बल्क ऑफ ऑक्सीजन इज कैरीड बाय द हीमोग्लोबिन देन ऑक्सीजन डिसोसिएशन का दैट डिपेंड्स ऑन थ्री फैक्टर्स दैट इसमें अब एसिडिटी और एल्कलिनिटी टेंपरेचर एंड लेवल ऑफ 2 3 डीपीजी 2 3 डाइफास्फोग्लिसरेट इन सभी को आप एनालाइज करते हैं देन टिश्यू पे हम देखते हैं क्या एंजाइम इंटीग्रिटी है कि टिश्यू में अगर एंजाइम इंटीग्रिटी नहीं होगी तो ऑक्सी यूटिलाइज नहीं होगी पड़ी रहेगी जैसे साइनाइड पॉइजनिंग होती है ऑक्सी डिलीवर हो रही है BO2 जा रही है वहां पे लेकिन इस्तेमाल नहीं हो रही और सेल की अपनी एक्टिविटी कितनी है पेशेंट हाइपोथर्मिक तो नहीं पेशेंट हाइपोथायरॉइड तो नहीं इन सारी चीजों को आपने खुद एनालाइज करना होता है ये तीन चीजें हैं जो डिलीवर करती है टिश्यू को ऑक्सीजन फ्रॉम द एयर दिस वी हैव हैव ऑलरेडी ऑलरेडी वेंटिलेटरी असिस्टेंट की इंडिकेशंस क्या क्या हैं इफ यू लुक एट द पीसीओ टू नॉर्मल इज थर्टी टू फोर्टी दिस इट शुड बी एक्सैक्टली फोर्टी इन नॉर्मल पर्सन इट्स वेरी डिफिकल्ट टू फाइंड नॉर्मल पर्सन ऑल्सो but we should make a range of 30 to 40 right then suggested ventilation is when it goes to 45 to 50 hum sochna shuru kar dete hain isko dalna chahiye but there should be another indication to put the patient on a ventilator then when it goes greater than 55 then is the sole indication to put the patient on a ventilator then we look at the dead space vd or vt is about one third hoti hai 0.3 to 0.4 is a normal. 0.5 to 0.6 तक जब पहुंचती है वो सोचते हैं अगर कि इसको डालना चाहिए जब 0.6 इस ज़्यादा हो जाए then we say it's a sole indication even if other parameters are normal we should put the patient on a ventilator. तब हम ऑक्सीजनेशन को देखते हैं अगर FiO2 21 percent है अगर आप एयर पे दे रहे हैं उसपे expected PO2 is 80 to 90 millimeter mercury. Right? अगर 50 to 60 पे आ जाता है we start thinking or she put on ventilator when it less than 50 it is a sole indication to put on a ventilator if the we are giving 100% oxygen 100% pe aapka normal po2 is 550 to 630 500 to 60 laga le so this is normal ye uska normal hai 100% pe ye yaad rakhe one of dekh ke na aapne dekha ki 200 aa gaya ji oxygen to bahut achhi hai to lekin aap de bhi to 100% de rahe hain when it comes down to 200 to 300 you start thinking that patient might be put on the ventilator when it comes to less than 200 that's the sole indication to put on ventilator then a a gradient if normally a gradient is 5 to 20 on oxygen only air only when it goes to 55 to 59 we start thinking then it goes greater than 60 then we definitely put them on ventilator then if you give 100% fio2 it is 20 to 60 is normal then 350 to 450 we start thinking then greater than 450 we definitely put them on ventilator 
extra life is us over qt 3 to 8% is the shunt if it goes to 30 to 40 we start thinking if it greater than 40 we definitely put them on ventilator mechanics are long may respiratory rate normal is 12 to 16 and it goes to 30 to 35 if there are other indications we definitely put them on ventilator if it is greater than 35 even if there is no indication we put them on a ventilator this is all not correct. then uh, tidal volume milliliter per kilogram normal is 6 to 8 when it goes down to 3.5 to 4, we start thinking when it is less than 3.5, then we definitely put them on ventilator. Vital capacity normally is 50 to 60 milliliter per kilogram. And it goes down to 10 to 15, we start thinking when it is less than 10, we definitely put them on a ventilator, right? Yeah, just to guide you. Then you know, in individual patient, there is a little bit of variation on. Now, how can arterial oxygen be improved? आप दे रहे हैं वेंटिलेट कर रहे हैं तो अभी उसका PO2 और ऑक्सीजनेशन ठीक नहीं है व्हाट आर द थिंग्स यू विल डू टू इंप्रूव द ऑक्सीजनेशन यू इंक्रीज द FiO2 पहले आप 40% दे रहे हैं 50% कर दे 60% कर देखिए उससे इंप्रूवमेंट है यू इंक्रीज द मेन एयरवे प्रेशर ऑफ इफ यू नो प्रेशर कंट्रोल एंड देन यू इंक्रीज द इंस्पिरेटरी फेज 1 टू 2 की रेशियो होती है 1 टू 1.0 2 टू दूसरी रेशियो बना दे 1.5 करने उसके बाद बाद वो इन्वर्स रेशियो वेंटिलेशन भी करनी पड़ती है इंस्पिरेटरी फेज इज मोर देन एक्सपिरेटरी फेज राइट ये स्टेप इसी लिहाज से आप देखें ये मैं ऑलवेज रिमेंबर थ्री ट्रॉमास बैरो ट्रॉमा वॉल्यू ट्रॉमा बायो ट्रॉमा ये आपको पता ही है क्या ट्रॉमा है बुलेट थेरेपी Oxygen delivered to tissue dependent on cardiac output, which is dependent on cardiac performance. Cardiac performance depends on the preload and afterload, and of course, it's on the myocardial contractility. Then it also depends on the blood hemoglobin. You can see if blood pressure is stroke volume is good, cardiac output is good, and blood pressure is high, you give a dose Norpine ki, thoda thoda right figure of energy a jata hai. Always look at the hemoglobin. Because the peripheral resistance is depend on the viscosity of blood. Main contributor to viscosity of blood is the hemoglobin. So peripheral resistance ko kare improve kare yaan usko. Aap sirf visopressor agent ke saag guzara nahi hota, badi jaldi phir wa guzara jati hai. So hemoglobin is a very important parameter also. It should be low kuch, sirf hirre log bhi aaye hai, intensive care mein, baro le murkum, ek bihari tha. So Bihari in London mein hota tha, intensive is very well known. Usne kaafi article bhi likhe hain Bihari hain, with Australian move kar gaya. Usne kaha diya, even if you take the hemoglobin up to 8, to isse aap, isse zyada na dhe, kyunke blood transfusion karne ke bade hazards hain. Usne loho ke zain badalne shuru kar diya. Udar se utha ek aadmi, wahan se Los Angeles se, usne kaha nahi, in a case of sepsis, here it is, you take the hemoglobin up to 12 or 30 because it's the main uh, thing which carries the oxygen is the hemoglobin. I'm all for him, with him also. I agree with him. blood transfusion reactions hain, usko sirf avoid karne ke liye aap uski oxygen carry capacity ko kam kar rahe hain. To usko kaafi logo ne pasand bhi kya, nahi pasand kya, bihari then move to Australia, he is an Australian oncologist, he is a professor or a consultant. So, parameters to monitor the oxygen we can, it's a mixed VO2, it should be greater than 65%. Blood lactate level and then PHI, gastric PH, now for pulmonary edema, it is Causative factor is there is increased capillary permeability. Our objective of management is minimize the hydrostatic pressure without compromising the cardiac. Our blood pressure of bahut ucha na jaane de. Usse hydrostatic pressure capillary already subsist ho isko to pores ho le hume. The fluid will be leaking out. Firstly, why not to 
रिड्यूस एक साइड पे आप ऑनकॉटिक प्रेशर को बढ़ाएं और दूसरी साइड पे उसको हाइड्रोस्टैटिक प्रेशर को कम करें लेकिन इतना कम ना करें कि इट शुड स्टार्ट अफेक्टिंग द ब्लड प्रेशर टू मच देन द प्रोफ्यूजन ऑफ ऑर्गन विल बी अफेक्टेड पोजीशनिंग पोजीशनिंग एंड फिजियोथेरेपी ठीक है पोजीशनिंग पे बड़ा लोगों ने लिखा है तो वो मैं आगे जाकर थोड़ा सा बताता हूं न्यूट्रिशनल सपोर्ट फॉर दिस पेशेंट is they are in a hypermetabolic condition in enteral nutrition should be given to every patient until unless there is contraindication for enteral nutrition then you start parenteral nutrition so minimum protein intake should be 1 to 1.5 gram per kilogram per day but i don't believe in that way given isliye likh diya ke kitabon mein likha hota hai lekin otherwise on see how much nutrition is required to this patient in this particular patient on this particular day is you calculate the nitrogen loss of previous day nitrogen loss depends on the blood urea which has been raised nitrogen loss is urea loss in the urine protein urea in teenon se aap calculate karte hain how much is the nitrogen bada easy hai ab main karta hu kabhi kabhi 24 hour ke nishchar mein jaata hu har patient ka karwata tha ki subah aapne iski nitrogen loss nikali honi chahiye और कुछ क्वेश्चन दी होती थी आपने कैलकुलेट करके रखनी है ईजी एफ आर हर का निकालना है हर पेशेंट का खा वो किन्नी की प्रॉब्लम है कि नहीं आप निकालें ताकि इनकी प्रैक्टिस हो कि खुद कैलकुलेट करने ठीक है तो इसको आप करें तो बड़े मजेदार होता है फिर उसको आप वन इंटू टू हंड्रेड और एवरी ग्राम और नाइट्रोजन लॉस यू गेव टू हंड्रेड किलो कैलरीज एंड टू हंड्रेड किलो कैलरीज और गिवन ओनली बाई लिपिड एंड कार्बोहाइड्रेट नाइट्रोजन लॉस इज रिप्लेस्ड बाई प्रोटीन वो इसलिए ये आजकल तो मिक्स करके आ जाती है जो वो हमारे पाकिस्तान में तो बहुत महंगी है वो इंग्लैंड वगैरह में तो बनाए होती सारी वहाँ भी हम न्यूट्रिशन को पूछा करता था मैं ऑन वॉट बेसिस कैलकुलेट ऐसी देखने में होती है तो उनको भी पीछे गुरुओं ने बताया कि इतना दो क्योंकि वो ये कैलकुलेशन से बचते हैं ये करते हैं उन्होंने भी रफ बेस पर चला रहे होते हैं वहाँ भी प्रिसाइजली बहुत सी चीज नहीं करते एक्सेसिव इन टेक शुड बी अवॉर्डेड इफ यू टेक मोर न्यूट्रिशन दैन विच इज रिकॉर्ड बाई द सेल दैट विल बी Causing a metabolic problem in the body, right? So, so all those metabolites will then get more problem. Okay. Other therapeutic consideration: infection control, extra carpal lung assistance. Ye bhi zain mein rakhe. Okay. Corticosteroids definitely we put them. Any septic patient, miscellaneous agent, prostaglandin system inhibitors, free radical scavengers, vasodilators, surfactant, and immunotherapies. These are all. हर एक जो है ना इंडिविजुअली एक टॉपिक लेकिन ये कम से कम आपको पता होना चाहिए कि व्हाट आर द अदर ऑप्शन आल्सो तो वेजो डायलेटर को जरा जेन में रखें अगर पेशेंट का सी पी ठीक नॉर्मल है ब्लड प्रेशर नॉर्मल है परिवरी कोल्ड है वट वुड यू डू परिवरी कोल्ड है इसका मतलब ट्यूशन और फिर सोचते देखते हैं वाटर वाई नॉट वेजो डायलेट द ब्लड फ्लो एंड लेट द ऑक्सीजन गो टू द टीशन लेकिन एट द सेम टाइम आपका सी पी कैथ है उसकी हीमोडाइनमिक्स को नॉर्मल रखें ट्राई टू कीप द हीमोडाइनमिक्स नॉर्मल सो दैट द प्रोफ्यूजन ऑर्गन शुड नॉट बी अफेक्टेड तो इस सारी कुछ चीज़ को देख के आपको शुड नॉट बी अफ्रेड ऑफ दिस थिंग बाद ऐसे भी देखे एकदम तो एक कंसल्टेंट मैं वहाँ लोकअप कर रहा होता तो आया सवाल मुझे कह लगा कि दिस पेशेंट शुड बी पुट ऑन हीमोफिल्ट्रेशन डायबिल्ट्रेशन तीन चार थी और ऊपर था वो चला गया मैंने देखा सी वी पी उसकी थोड़ी सी हाई थी पेरीफ्री कोल्ड थी टैकी कार्डिया था तो मैंने वो स्टाफ को कहा कि लेट्स पुट इम ऑन वेजो डायलेटर एंड फिल द बॉडी तो सी वी पी डाउन होती गई तो मैं और फ्लो डालता गया डालता गया पर फिर वार्म हो गई शाम तक उसका फर्स्ट क्लास यूरन आउटपुट शुरू हो गया शाम को आया उसने फिर मुझसे टेक ओवर करना था कहता और डिट यू डू द हीमो फिल्ट्रेशन में आई डेंट डू There are about two twenty two hundred urine here. But how did it come? Like it came through the kidney. Cancer is very rare. Was going to tell you. I said, I am passing by. 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 I am passing by.
इट्स अ वंडरफुल थिंग इट्स आप इंजॉय करते हैं इसको जब बैठ के करें शाम तक आपका पेशेंट बेहतर हो जाता है यूरो प्रोडक्शन शुरू होगी मॉडल अच्छे टी का ऑक्सीजन बेहतर हो रही है तो यू फील इन साइड दैट यू डन समथिंग फॉर द पेशेंट यू डन समथिंग फॉर द ह्यूमैनिटी एक और चीज जो इस्तेमाल करते हैं नाइट्रिक ऑक्साइड ठीक है नाइट्रिक ऑक्साइड इज तो नाइट्रिक ऑक्साइड इज ए ब्रिजोप्रेशन इनहिबिटर आप जब देखे आप ब्लड प्रेशर ब्लड इज पुश्ड आउट बाय द हार्ट आगे पल्स वेव फॉर्म बनती है पल्स इन रेडियल आर्ट आती है चली जाती है आती चली जाती ऐसे होती है ये कैसे ब्लड फ्लो करता है यू ही ब्लड निकलता है हार्ट से आगे बोलिसिस में आगे जा रहा है यहाँ ब्लड ने जाना होता है वहाँ नाइट्रोक्साइड प्रोड्यूस होती है कैपिली एंड ये वैसे एंडोथिलियम से तो वो डायलेट कर देती है यूं ही वो बोलस गुजरता है फिर अपनी जगह बह जाती है वो मेटाबलाइज हो जाती है पढ़ा है नाइट्रोक्साइड की तरफ नाइट्रोक्साइड की तरफ गौर से पढ़े आप बड़ी मजेदार है मैंने इस पर पहली किताब में लिखा है इसका बनाया हुआ काफ़ी इस पर डिटेल में लिखा हुआ है नाइट्रोक्साइड की डिफरेंट किस्में और तो ये उसी पे चलती है अब देखें किसी को हेमरेज होगी सब रिकॉर्ड हेमरेज ओके कोई एनोडिज्म फट गया उसके फॉरन बहुत बड़ी डर वो हो जाती है विजुअल स्पेस हो जाता है क्यों होता है विजुअल स्पेस दैट इज द बेस्ट टाइम टू डू द सर्जरी ऑन द ब्रेन उसको क्लिप करें एनोडिज्म को क्यों उस टाइम वैसे कंस्ट्रिक्ट हुई वाई देर कंस्ट्रिक्टेड जब उसकी कैपिलरी की एंडोथीलियम ब्रीच हो जाती है नाइट्रोक्साइड की प्रोडक्शन कम हो जाती है जब नाइट्रोक्साइड की प्रोडक्शन नहीं होगी तो वैसे क्रैप्स हो कंट्रीट कर जाती है तो इसलिए दैट इज द बेस्ट एंड विद इन ट्वेंटी फोर आवर्स यू मस्ट डू द सर्जरी अगर उसके बाद हो फिर वेट कर लें जाने का जहाँ आने का ऑपरेशन के तो इसलिए फॉरन इनो सर्जरी शुड बी रेड यू टू डू इट ये अगली दफा करें यहाँ पर टाइम तो नहीं हो गया काफी है तो कोई नहीं ये मोटे मोटे मैंने पॉइंट ही बताए हैं आपको एवरी पॉइंट नीड्स मोर एक्सप्लेनेशन तो लेकिन आप खुद इसकी एक्सप्लेनेशन किताबों में ढूंढिया आपको मिलेंगे पर दिस इज द स्टैंडर्ड वे ऑफ लुकिंग एट के और दी एस और लोग कॉम्प्लीकेट करके बताते हैं कुछ यही आप मैंने दिए है हैंड आउट दिया है उसकी कॉपी कर लें एक तो पॉइंट को आप देखें बड़ा मजेदार टॉपिक है ये ऑल दो मोर्टेलिटी रेट इवन इन द एडवांस कंट्रीज ऑल्सो वेयर कितने के एडवांस है कोई इतना फर्क नहीं पड़ता अपने एडवांस कहते हैं वहाँ बड़ी बड़ी गलतियाँ होती हैं तो फिर भी इज अबाउट मोर देन सिक्सटी परसेंट डेथ इन फुल फ्लैज एस विच वही है तरीके आ गए हैं डायग्नोज करने के मैनेजमेंट के डिफरेंट तरीके आ गए हैं लेकिन मोर्टेलिटी वही है उससे बड़ी है उससे कम नहीं हुई तो लेकर वो जो मैंने पहली स्टेजेस बताई है ना अर्ली स्टेजेस में अगर आप पकड़ लें देन यू कैन मेरी वंस ए आर डी एस में चला गया पेशेंट फिर बड़ा मुश्किल होता है तो ये मैं एक्स्ट्रा कॉर्पोरियल ऑक्सीजनेशन के मेथड जो हैं डिफरेंट ये आप लोग तो बेहतर जानते हो आप लोगों ने पाशा साहब को भी डाला था ना जहाँ तो आप लोग थे यहाँ पे अच्छा थैंक यू तो आल कोई हो तो पूछ कॉम्प्लीकेटेड ये सारी चीजें बड़ी आसान है मुश्किल तो कोई नहीं है कोई ऐसी बात नहीं जिसमें आपको समझ नहीं आती बड़े आसान आप डेली करते भी मोस्ट ऑफ थिंग यू डू एवरी डे थोड़ा सा अपने आप को कंपोज कर लें और उसी लिहाज से चलें किताबों में जो चीजें लिखी होती हैं ना तो बड़े 